everyone welcome back to my channel i'm doing a friday sews today and it's been a couple of weeks so i've got a few things to catch up on so you might want to grab a cuppa and let's get started right so you will have to forgive me because i've got my notes and as i might glance down occasionally i just don't want to forget anything because i don't plan these videos but i do make a few notes of things i do want to say starting with a massive thank you for anyone who follows me on instagram and if you do not, I will pop my handle here so you can pop on over and uh, follow me over there. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was now, I noticed I was very close to 2,000 followers. So I shared a little cheeky story asking if anyone um, would like to follow me. And the lovely Tamlin from Sewn on the Tyne and Joanne from Joanne in Stitches shared that story. And within an hour or so, I was over the 2000 mark. So thank you to you two and thank you very much to all my followers. I really appreciate it. I do tend to put more regular content on Instagram because it's quick. So if you want to see things a bit more regularly, then do hop on over. So yeah, I wanted to make sure I said thank you because I can't believe when I first set it up, my son used to laugh and say that, you know, no one was gonna follow me on Instagram. So uh, we've proved him wrong. <laughs> so thank you for that. Secondly, an update, as you may be able to see from my little mannequin here, I have finished the second attempt at my Mabel. If you recall, the shearing that I did was far too tight. And actually, I wasn't able to get it on the mannequin when I did the first one. So that shows. But yeah, I've redone it. So I took the peplum off. And I did the shearing with the uh, screw that I mentioned on the Brother Bobbin case slightly looser than I had done it. And it gave it the perfect tightness on the shearing. And then I put it back together and now I'm very happy with it. So I was really happy to get that finished. I'm just going to pop that slightly out of the way. So, yeah, that was one thing I've done. Another thing I've done, which I shared on Instagram is I have dyed one of my favourite tops. So I've got it down here, so just let me grab it for you. So I'll pop in a photo as well. But this was one I did quite at the beginning of my sewing dressmaking journey. The lovely Laura, who is the Specky Seamstress, made loads of these. And it is a pattern by McCall's and it is M7722. And I made this one from a really fab combination of fabrics, which were from the same range. And so I'll pop in the photo, I think, of the before. And they had um, polar bears all over the front. Well, I think they're polar bears. I've no idea why I think they're polar bears and not just bears. <laughs> but I've got polar bears all over the front. And then this sort of abstract design of triangles all over the arms. And I loved that top. But for quite a while, I didn't really want to wear it. And it took me a while to realise that I just didn't like the colour on me. I love the colour hence why I bought the fabric, but on me, I didn't like it. And so I thought, first of all, I was gonna get rid, and then I thought, no, before I do that, I will try and dye it. And I think it's a success. Now, I'm not sure how well this will show, because it is very dark. I dyed it with a pod, and that comes in the UK here, at least, uh, in um, dye do a little pod, and you basically bung it in the washing machine with whatever you want to dye and it does the magic for you. And I hope you can see, I've made it this lovely navy blue. And if I put it closer, you may be able to see that you can still see the design. So obviously in photos and from a distance you can't, but up close, you can still see, I'm hoping that's showing up, you can still see the bears and you can still see that abstract on the arms. And I love, how this colour's turned out and it's much more my colours. So now I'm gonna wear it loads. So I was really happy because it was only like on the off chance I thought I'd give it a go. Now there's a few funny things. The thread clearly wasn't all cotton or natural cotton because that on um that was yellow, you might be able to see the label will be the best way to show you. Look, that didn't die. <laughs> but you know, I don't care about that in the slightest. I'm calling this an absolute win. And um, yeah, so I've done a remake of my Mabel and I've dyed a top that I've been thinking that I wouldn't wear. And the last sort of changes I'm making, which I'm only still doing currently, is I have a sagebrush top, which 
I made in this gorgeous fabric from Fabric Heaven. And I'll pop in a photo and I've been doing Me Made May, which I'll mention later, but I've been doing Me Made May on Instagram. You know, do not wear this top. I made a point of dragging it out to wear it for Instagram. A couple of people have said that maybe the sizing's a bit wrong because it's very narrow on my shoulders here, which means that the puff starts right here instead of sort of on the edge. And I don't like that for a start. And also Hayley from Hales More Sewing pointed out to me that, and I thought this as well myself, but I couldn't quite pinpoint it. The frill seems awfully high and that's drawing even more attention up here to the shoulders. So the whole of it. So in general, it's not worked brilliantly first time. So <laughs> I have got the top. So as I say, gorgeous fabric. Don't like the big American footballer shoulder effect. So another time. So if you see, that's quite narrow. I'm thinking of doing um, the next size up. So hopefully it'll be longer and maybe even doing a wide shoulder adjustment so that those puffiness will be further off my sleeve and not up here like 80s style. <laughs> I'm also thinking of taking some of the width, size, whatever you call it, out of the sleeve so that there's less to gather up, therefore not so puffy. My lovely friend Angela, I'm pretty sure, did that with hers. But yeah, this looks like... um. A deconstructed top at the moment because I have removed the, the frill <laughs> from the front and I'm going to hopefully try and gather that up and sew it back together and see if that makes a difference and if the sleeves don't seem so bad then on this one if not then this is going to be recycled and my next version I'll make the adjustments of uh, the shoulders like I said and maybe even see if I can lower that frill because I really want the sagebrush to work because it looks so good on so many people. So th that's little projects I've been working on because I haven't sewn any actual sort of new garments since my last Friday sews. Let me check what else I was going to talk about. So Me Made May, as I said, if you follow me on Instagram, I have been doing Me Made May. And today I've posted up what I'm wearing, which is this new look 6217. It's one of the very first ones I did, actually. I think I got this peacock fabric from Barbican Fabrics here in Plymouth. And I love the fabric. I really wanna make a jumpsuit out of it or a top and some trousers so it looks like a jumpsuit. Anyway, I digress. Yes, this is 6217. And as I said in my post, I generally make that top out of stretch even though it's meant to be woven because I prefer it that way. But I am trying in my Me Made May to go through makes that I don't necessarily wear, wear them and then decide what it is I don't like and why I'm not wearing them. So for instance, as I say, sagebrush top was to do with the whole frill and the big shoulders. So I've now realised if I can adjust that, I'll wear it. This one I don't wear because it's woven, basically. So I'm not, I'm not reaching for it because it's not my favourite, but actually I'm wearing it today and I'm going to see. And I'm thinking I'm going to try a few more of the new look patterns in woven and maybe in different types of fabrics and maybe I'll love it as much as I love the stretch because I've made the stretch in about half a dozen different uh, lovely fabrics. So Me Made May will finish, when is it? Next Wednesday. And my plan currently is I will do a video of a roundup. So my aim for dragging out the makes and wearing them all throughout May is to see which ones I'm going to keep, which ones I can make alterations to so I can keep and which ones have got no chance of staying in my wardrobe and are going to have to go. <laughs> so hopefully I'll give you that in a few, uh, well, not a few weeks because it finishes next Wednesday. Soon, soon. I'll give you a little roundup and I'll just quickly go through what I chose each day and what my thoughts are on it. Not in great detail because 31 days, that could be a long video, right? <laughs> so I've been doing Me Made May over on Instagram. Do go check it out. I have also got a couple of fabrics I haven't shown you yet. So I will be showing them right at the very end. But the main thing I've been doing the last couple of weeks while I've been absent from here is organising. So you know that I've been de-stashing and organising my fabrics. So I've been really trying to get my sewing room into a state where I feel really comfortable that I can just come in and pick up what I want to do and sew it. And one of the main things that I've mentioned more than once is helping me is the app Stash Hub. I will link it below. It is by the lovely Yvette, who is Blossom Sandwich on 
Instagram and YouTube. Again, I'll link her below as well. I always link everything I talk about below, so do make sure to check out the description. And yeah, I used it for the fabrics, which I've loved. And now I've been using it for my patterns. So you will have seen on Instagram that I've been putting them into boxes and I've been putting them onto the app. So hopefully I'll pop in some photos, videos alongside. So it will show you what I mean. So above me here, I have these two hemline pattern boxes and I have named them box one and box two. <laughs> and in the app, there is a location section. So when you're putting your pattern in and you're saying what the pattern is and you know everything about the pattern, you can put a location. So I have put hemline box one or hemline box two. And I've been going through and I've done, I think there's about 33 patterns or so in the boxes. So I've filled those two boxes up and it's really good because now if I see the pattern on my app and I want to maybe make that pattern, I know by looking at the location exactly where I can find it because I don't know about you, but honestly, I've been wanting to sew things over the last few months and I've been like, I know I have it. I know I have it. And I like can't find it, like I can't find the pattern or I can't find the particular fabric. So since I've been putting everything on Stash Hub, it's been really, really useful. And the most recent one I did this week is I have these little white tubs, which I'll hopefully pop in a photo because it's just above me. I don't know if you can see, but it's above me there. And I've got these two white tubs and they are called Tub One. And it will be tub two. I haven't got to it yet. And again, I've been putting patterns in there and listing them on the location. So immediately I know where they are. So I'm really loving reorganising and setting everything up so that I can just get on and sew. So that's something I've been doing for the last two weeks. And I honestly highly recommend checking it out. It's a great little app and it's really been useful to me. I've also been labelling and some of you may have seen, labelling up my shelves. So um, hopefully editing me when I finish this will video some of this behind me to show you what I've been doing. OK, guys, so I'm just going to put in a little quick video here um, because I was talking about my newly organised fabric stash. As you can see, the majority of it is here in my Calyx units. So just to say that with my labels, I have labelled things like plain jerseys and viscoses are in one. Then I've got animals and animal prints in another. Plain wovens in there. So I won't go through all of them, but there's um, this one here is, uh, you'd never guess it, stripes. <laughs> That's all stripes. And then in this single one, this top Calyx unit there, all of these are from Fabric Heaven. Uh, so I've literally called it Fabric Heaven and Zips. I've then quickly got some brushed cotton and some checked fabrics. I've got here my devil gauzes. And oh, where is it there? Look, corduroy. So needle cords and well cord, big ones, all of that in there. So this is a really quick one, just in case you thought that was a lot of fabrics, because I know people do think that. This rather nifty little cupboard opens up and oh my gosh, look, <laughs> I haven't sorted these ones. They're just in there and they're in the door as well. Excuse my finger there. Yeah. So hmm, I'll have to sort them at some point. But yeah, I've done it with my fabrics and I'm really finding that so useful when I'm going to grab a fabric. So another thing I do love is uh, labelling, just labelling, labelling, labelling. I mentioned it in my last video, but honestly, it's just been a lifesaver because my room was an absolute state and it wasn't that long ago that I lost my sojo. And in hindsight, I realised it's because I didn't want to come in my room because it was in such a state. So has anyone had that? I'm sure other people get that as well, right? It's not just me. Yeah, it was such a state. I didn't want to sew. And now I love coming in because it's it, it's only a small room, but it's so organised that I can just get on, pick things up and just sew, which is what I want to do. So I will show you the fabrics I've got. Uh, two, two fabrics and also a few labels before I sign off for my Friday sews for this week. So I'll show you the labels first because they're right down here. So um, these cute little stickers, if anyone shops them, you'll recognise that is so anonymous. Again, I will link their website below. 
and sorry about the wrink the crinkling i got these ones these were actually reduced in price because when they came they weren't pre-folded but obviously clearly i'm just gonna put them under an iron and they're as good as gold but they're really lovely and bright and they say hopefully that will show hello sunshine and i got six of them from so anonymous and yeah i love them and again, like with everything else and my buttons, I have a location for labels. So when I put them away now, I will know where to find them <laughs> in the future. As I said, I have two fabrics. This first one is from, oh, I can never say it. I'm so sorry. I'm going to pop it on the screen here. It's French and um, I love their company. And in fact, I think I've just ordered a couple more fabrics because they were doing some discount codes for subscribers to their email this i absolutely love and i think i got let me sorry check my list i got two and a half meters and it was 14 pounds a meter it's a cloud nine fabric i've had some of those before and i love them and this i think was called edgar's writing room and i'm guessing they mean i'm i'm thinking edgar Allan poe um but yeah i absolutely love this let me get it fully open so you can see look at this how gorgeous is that fabric i absolutely love the quirkiness with the telephones the old-fashioned style telephone the skulls the books and yeah little test tubes i really want to make a dress with this my daughter saw this and said oh can you make me a tote bag and i thought no <laughs> sorry darling i love you but no not a chance i'm making myself a dress um i'm thinking a. Uh, I'm saying this a lot and I haven't made one yet, but a shirt dress I think would be lovely in this. But we'll see. We'll see. I've got, um, yeah, two and a half metres of that. And I imagine they've still got some. I'll link it below if they do. But yeah, I absolutely loved that when I saw it and couldn't resist. And then the other fabric was from the lovely Shell, who is so affordable. She normally does per metre. Occasionally she does bundles, which I bought, but this time she was doing specific cuts. I don't know if I'm guessing they were bolt ends, etc. This one I'm just checking. I got three and a half metres of this. It's a viscose jersey. Three and a half metres, mind you, £11. This is why I have so much fabric, right? <laughs> uh, so it's a black background, which is actually unusual for me. I tend to go for navy and I'm hoping they'll show. But look at these gorgeous flowers in this lovely teal and then like a cream and a sort of um it's like a mushroom is it but I mean I just love that and like I say I have three and a half meters and my plan although I've never made one yet is a Westcliff dress so if anyone's made them if they could let me know what they think I'm thinking the full long version in this might be really nice but I couldn't resist I love Shell's fabrics and they're such good value um, so yeah, I have some more fabrics coming on their way to me as we speak. So hopefully when I do my next Friday sews, I'll be able to share those with you. But that is basically it. The only other thing I wanted to mention before I sign off is UK guys, the sewing bee is back. Yay. I'm sure everyone is as excited as I am. I sat down and watched the first episode and as always, I absolutely loved it. I'm really looking forward to seeing the contestants characters come out and their their sewing styles are already coming out a bit um yeah I always love it when the sewing bee comes around I was getting a bit worried because it seemed awfully late this year and I was like come on we need our sewing bee so yeah I'm following that so that's something that I might I'm gonna try not to comment on in my video because I know that not everyone gets to see it at the time it's on but just say that I'm loving it and I can't wait for the next sort of nine weeks to come round so I can see everybody and all their makes and how they get on and of course who wins oh <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna sign off I think for now do give me a little thumbs up if you've enjoyed my usual waffle and um, let me know what you're up to and what you're sewing and any plans you've got I love hearing the chat I don't always get round to replying because life is so busy I'm really sorry but I do read them all Please believe if you see a heart on your comment, I have read it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say goodbye and I will catch you all in my next video. Mm -hmm.